things are different because of coronavirus. It turned out that in, in the fall when committees were starting to meet this, to schedule and start planning for these other science days, that there were a lot of places where we simply were unable to lock in a location for a physical science fair. And without being able to lock in a location, uh, a lot of fairs made the choice to go forward with planning for a virtual fair, because at least that way we can plan for an event that can happen regardless of sort of what's going on around us. So um, <clears throat> what ended up happening is Montgomery County Science Day was completely canceled. There's a fair that um, not a lot of Carroll students have gone to, but a few have, um, called Buckeye Science and Engineering Fair. And that fair exists solely this year to choose students to go to International Science Fair. It's the same submission process as the regional fair. And ISEF also is going to be a virtual fair, which is kind of disappointing, but completely understandable in, in light of sort of what's going on with the pandemic. You know, we don't want to be sending a bunch of people to an international event, literally where every person is from a different place. Um, it's a really great thing. I, I attended a conference that was run by the people who organize ISEF. It, I really enjoyed that particular online conference. And so I think that it will still be a good experience if you get to participate, but it will be different than getting on a plane and meeting with people in person. Um, next, if you want to go on and you want to participate in the district science day, and then depending on how your project does at the district virtual fair, the state science fair, um, I do give extra credit for that. It is going to be two points added on to your quarter grade um, for entering, for doing a complete entry, and then another point if you get a superior. So you can get up to three points for district and up to three points added on to your quarter grade for state. And that depends, it's going to be placed on the quarter where that grade happens. Um, you don't have to have a qualifying score for that, but my recommendation is that you do it if you have a superior or a high excellent. If you have, if you're below about 30, you need to think really hard about if you want to do that, because I don't want to have you guys just spending the time to enter it um, if your project may not do well. And so you want to make sure that if you, especially if you're in the bottom half of excellence, that, that you sit down with me and we have a chat about things you can do to improve your project. And that would need to happen like probably like tomorrow. Um, I know it's, like, it's a very short timeline. The timelines for these fairs are you need to submit it by Monday. Ooh. Yes. So we're going to, we're going to talk about what that means because you're already just by having completed a science fair project, you're a good 90% of the way there. So, um, there is a, another task to do in filling out the online stuff, but after that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some things. What you're going to end up doing is you're going to have to go to the Ohio Academy of Science page, which looks like this. I preloaded a bunch of these already for you guys. So this is the Ohio Academy of Science. The place to look for information would be under Science Days, um, where it says District and State Science Day. This is what that page is like. Um, it gives you instructions up at the top. Um, so here's some things you can print out if you're a person who likes checklists. You can print these things. Uh, you can also um, scroll down. There's some videos here that you can watch. Um, where you'll end up going is down to the bottom of the page. It says click here to go to STEM Wizard Home. That page looks like this. I went through here, and I just to get through this page, you have to fill in all this information. The initial, pa the initial page does not ask for any payment, and then you can submit this. I didn't want to like type my address and my phone number and stuff in front of you guys. So I, I invented an entry here so that we could like look at what what was oh, inside this thing. Yeah, I know. I know. Is it's okay. Maybe. Maybe. Last year we had to like rewrite a whole intro just to get it. Yeah. Yeah, you had to like, just like copy so and paste it from your No. You okay. Couldn't. You couldn't. So there are a series of milestones across here. I know it looks like a lot of things, but these are all just small Okay, so there's um, project information here, and this is basic stuff. What is your project name? What is your category? Who's your teacher? I think that I'm in here already. Um, so I'm in there. And then you do the save and next thing. In order to do this, you have to put something in there and click save and next. Um, project information, additional info. I think this is probably some questions. 
files and forms is your things like your research plan, your checklist, 1A, 1B, you guys have those. If you have any issues or concerns about creating a PDF with that, please feel free to bring me your forms and I will scan them and I will send you the PDF to put into that. I don't mind doing that. There's display requirements, which should probably be pretty benign because this is an online science fair and you don't have to actually do much in terms of a display. Um, consent and conduct, this is you know, just general permission slippy kind of things. This is the benchmark or this is the, this is the, the point where it's gonna ask you to pay for a fee. Down here towards the end is where you will fill out something for your special awards. Um, depending on your district. Our district is District 10. I believe this information is available somewhere on the, the Ohio Academy of Science page. So I'm going to post this on YouTube, so I'll put links for all these things down there below too. Um, this last one is the virtual judging milestone. So this is where you put all the information that is going to go out to judges. So Everything before that, all of the stuff is going to be hidden from judges, except possibly like the special awards information. I can't get to those because I have to fill it out. So this guy down here, the virtual science day milestone is the one that you guys need to kind of worry about. To fill that out, they actually give us a document about what's going to be behind that milestone. So you can see what it is before you get to it. At the, at the first part of it, it asks you your project title. Is it an individual team project? What grade are you in? What type of project are you? Here's a place for your abstract. Don't forget about that. You guys already wrote your abstracts, right? Right. You already have that. So you just have to copy it and paste it. There's a place here for your YouTube link. Here is the biggest thing to know about your YouTube link. When, if you are having trouble uploading your video, which should be a maximum of 15 minutes long. If you're having trouble uploading it and you think that you're not going to be ready by the deadline, what you do is you start to upload it on your computer or your phone and you get the, you get the link and you put the link into, into the box on STEM wizard because it will continue to upload. You're not going to get judged exactly at the moment that it closes, right? You have time to upload after that point. Try not to push it, guys. Don't push the deadline. Um, but if you put the link there, you can submit it on time, even if your video is not done uploading. Lastly, there's a spot for your final report. This should be uploaded as a PDF so that there's no formatting drama that happens. Remember, you should not have your school name on your paper. Okay, let's have our Name. You can have your personal name, but not your school name. Okay. You should not have your school name on your on your abstract. You should not have your school name on your board. When you introduce yourself in your video, do not say hello. I am. Just can say hi. My name is blah blah blah. You can say you're a sophomore, and then say and my project. Just jump right into your project. Okay, so there's information on this document about your video. So this is something that has to get uploaded. Um, <clears throat> you're given instructions, some things to notice. Your entire video should not be longer than 15 minutes. It says judges will not be required to continue watching past the 15 minutes, right? Because they're going to send you a link. I think last year I volunteered to judge, and I think that I did... Gosh, I can't remember how many I judged. I judged like a half a dozen projects, but I can't remember if it was district or state. But, you know, it, it takes you a couple of hours to sit down and look at the videos and look at the papers and see if students have answered the questions that I, that I have about their project, even though I can't talk to them. So that's kind of tricky to do. So try to stick to under 15 minutes. Um, this does not mean, this does not mean make a five minute presentation because if you make your presentation too short the problem that you may have is that the judges have a question about something and you just didn't get to it you just didn't answer the you just didn't say the things that they have questions about and then the judge has to decide do how do i how do i deal with scoring the student that didn't give me enough information and also didn't fill the time 
because it's not that they omitted it because they ran out of time. It's they just they just decided that they were done. Now, the Ohio Academy of Science is recommending using PowerPoint slides and then creating a presentation by sharing the slides. What I would recommend that you do is embed a, a webcam image of yourself in that. So I think that you guys all have computers that are capable of doing that. Um, it's nice for the judges to be able to see you talking about your project and know that it's you. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can also use your, your science fair board display that you made, and that's fine. If you go the route where you are including your display board, I would strongly recommend getting images of your board that are high enough resolution that you can incorporate into the very end of your paper so that if judges have questions about something specific on your board, there's a place where they can view an image of that, where they can zoom in on it. Um, I had a couple of issues last year where a student said something about a graph while they were doing their filmed presentation, and I wanted to see what their data actually said, but there, it didn't appear anywhere in their, in their paper. And that's kind of a problem, right? Like if, if a student is talking about something that's important enough to be in their presentation, but they don't include it in their paper, it makes it hard for me to, to identify things like, well, what was the actual variable there? How are they measuring that? No, those details need to be there. There's also some questions here that you probably want to consider doing. The folks who came up with these questions are people who run fairs a lot. So these are really good questions. What interests you about this topic? What did you learn? What question were you trying to answer? Uh, what were your goals? If you had to do this again, what would you change? All of this stuff should sound pretty familiar to you guys. Right, you've seen this before. At the bottom, there's a list of some programs that you can use to make a video, especially using slides. Um, I'm very familiar with Screencastify. That's what I use for a bunch of videos that I show you guys that I make. Zoom also works, but it kind of cuts out a strip on the side of your of your of your uh, screen, so you will lose some of it. These other ones, I'm sure, work sort of similarly, but I don't have that much experience with them. Yeah, screencast of screencast o matic I've been a little bit more frustrated with than Screencastify. Um, for your final project report, this again should look really familiar. Title, student name, abstract, introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion, acknowledgments, references. You guys have seen this, right? This is your paper. You've already done this. So out of all the things that are on this list, the only thing that you have to actually create that's new is you need to record your presentation. That's, that's the only new thing. Uh, this, this link right here, the detailed explanation of each item, that is, that's the yellow sheet that I gave you guys last week. Right? So you've already done this. You guys don't have anything new that you need to come up with to do this. Um, so the, the cost for District Science Day is $25. So you have to submit 25 bucks. Now, uh, in case you're wondering, in, a, in addition to you know, being able to say that you participated in the science fair and getting feedback on your research and maybe getting some extra credit, right? I mean, you will. You will, but we'll see how much. You guys don't even have to submit anything. I literally get a report about it. Um, you can sign up for special awards. We can check what our special awards would be. Is that the only one? Oh, man. Why is there only one? Oh, here we go, guys. That That is, that's only the list of awards that require pre-registration. You're not, it says... Um, I know. <laughs> Only awards available for pre-registration are listed. Each district has more awards that are given out, but they do not require pre-registration. You're not required to register for any awards if they don't fit your project. Don't sign up for soybeans if you didn't do soybeans. <clears throat> You're also not required to register for any awards if they don't fit, or if you don't wish to register for any that are listed. 